Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is trouble. Trouble. Now, what do you do when you get into trouble? Now, some of you, I know you may just say, oh, well, I hadn't been in trouble since my younger days. and I learned a lot since then. And I pray we all did learn from it. And I'm sure some of us probably got into more trouble than others. And some of us, maybe even as adults, we still get into trouble. You know, I always like to use that example of a speeding ticket or something like that. And maybe that's the biggest trouble we get into. Or, you know, we may get in some hot water with our wives or our husbands and uh, for you women out there. And, and we may we may get into hot water or trouble with our friends or relationships, things like that. But think about even getting into real trouble, into a dangerous situation. Right. What, what do we do? Right now, a lot of times we realize we've gotten ourselves into these situations. And even as much as we look in the Old Testament, continuing to go through Isaiah and, and even on into the new, as he's looking ahead, especially as you get to Revelation, looking ahead to what is to come. The trouble is not just going to come out of nowhere. The trouble, we can see it already on the horizon. Nation upon nation, we see the increasing of storms and severity of storms, these things. You know, it's not because of climate change and it's not because of all these things. Now, uh, you could have little factors in there, but at the end, everything is leading up to happen exactly how God said it was going to happen. But again, I go back to the question, what do you do when you get into trouble? What do you do when you want to get out of trouble? Now, most of the time we will beg and plead with God to get us out of trouble before we stop to ask him to forgive us of what we've done wrong before we ask him to show us maybe what we've done wrong, before we even begin to try to learn the error of our ways. But see, there's something to be said. If you've noticed as you're reading along in these chapters that there's always a small remnant that are righteous, a, a, a small remnant that remain and will be saved. And even when he's talking about things that were coming in their immediate future, and then even as we look ahead, to even still our future, still lying ahead of us, there's always a remnant. God is always uh, able to, to hold, hold back some of his people to protect them because they were faithful. So today I want you to see, as you look through Isaiah chapter 33, you will see, first you'll see what's going on with these people who are righteous and, and the prayer that they have. And you're going to see even thinking about uh, looking ahead to the times that were coming and then looking ahead to the leader who would one day take over. So Isaiah 33, looking at verse 2, and then we'll jump down to verse 22. In verse 2, they say, O oh Lord, be gracious to us. We have waited for you. Be their arm every morning. Our salvation also in the time of trouble. And then you go down to verse 22. He says, for the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. It's interesting to see, uh, I love Warren Wiersbe, how he put it. He says, never underestimate the power of a praying minority. And see, even when you have that remnant, that, that few that were being righteous, the prayer of a few, we know that James tells us the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man accomplishes or avails much. It can get a lot done. Never underestimate the power of your prayer. Where two or three are gathered, right? Even this past Sunday, we were talking about in Sunday school how important it is for us to come together and pray together. Never underestimate that power. And even as Israel and, and the Jewish people, even as the people of Judah too, as, as they're looking ahead to see the destruction coming from Assyria and they're praying, God, save us. God, be our arm, right? Be the arm of anybody that would stand up for us and stand against the Assyrians. Be, be our arm, be our salvation. And you'll see a transition as you go through that it talks about the way that God was going to be in control and the way that we look ahead to the fact that there's a Messiah who's going to take over and he is going to be the judge, the lawgiver, and the king. I think it's interesting that if you go back and if you know your history, you'll 
No, that even when the Pilgrims, right, the the Mayflower Compact back in ni- 19, in 1620, when they left England, one of the, the covenant that they made there at that time was involved in that, was the, this verse that, that the Lord was going to be their judge, their lawgiver, and their king. Fast forward a little bit more, and you can even see that uh, the United States and our founding fathers saw fit for us to have three branches of government and based it on this verse, or a good portion of it was based on this verse. The judge, the Supreme Court. To to think about the the lawgiver or to be Congress, and then to have the king or to be who would be president. The three different branches of government that we have, we can see tied up in Scripture. See, we had praying people at the beginning and the founding of our country, and and now, what are, what do we have? We've gotten so far away, and so often we look to the Old Testament and we see in Scripture. From beginning to end, how many times God's people get away from what they are supposed to be doing? And how many times have you and I, as Americans, how how many times have we gotten away from even how this nation was founded? See, we look and we say, well, we're outnumbered. We look and we feel discouraged because there's nothing that we can do. Well, what can I do? What can our little church do? Well, here's what you can do. And here's what your quote unquote little church can do. You can pray. In times of trouble, pray. Never underestimate the power of a few that are praying. A faithful few. So be faithful in the little things. God says you got to be faithful in the little things first. So let's be faithful to pray, not just in the time of trouble, but when that time of trouble comes and we see it on the horizon, Why would we do anything but pray? Something for us to think about and pray about today. God bless you, and I pray have a great, great day.